Let's encourage you to go subscribe to the podcast. You can search out my name, Clay Travis. You can search out Buck Sexton. And when you do, you will be able to have access to the entire Clay Travis Buck Sexton network, including our friend Tudor Dixon's uh, podcast that she is doing, which is being uh, wildly successful. Also, Carol Markowitz, Lisa Booth, Sean Parnell, more and more great content for all of you. Uh, And we appreciate all of you hanging out with us. And speaking of hanging out with us, we are joined now by Tudor Dixon of the Tudor Dixon podcast, which is killing it. Uh, Tudor. Let's dive right in. Michigan primary was yesterday. Buck and I have talked about it a great deal. What stood out to you as someone who knows the politics, knows the nuance of Michigan, of the data from the Republican and the Democrat primaries? What's the story? What should we be thinking basically eight months from Election Day? Well, on the Republican side, some key counties went big for Trump, and that was something that we didn't see in 2022. Macomb County came out big for Trump. We saw Oakland County coming out. They're split with Democrats and Republicans, but still big for Trump. It looks like a lot of those voters who didn't come out in 2022 are back. They're engaged. We had good numbers for a primary. But on the Democrat side, I think the most interesting thing that we saw was, of course, the uncommitted voters. We know that the uncommitted campaign was being put on by Rashida Tlaib and her sister. They were very actively telling people not to vote for Joe Biden. What I don't think that Gretchen Whitmer and Joe Biden anticipated was the impact that would have on college campuses. So that to me is very interesting. They've created this narrative on college campuses. And now how are they going to pull that back if they don't have something else to hook those young people in with? They may have a problem on college campuses in Michigan come November. Hey, Tudor Buck here. Thanks for being with us. Uh, Can you give us uh, something of a battlefield overview? for how it looks going into uh, the 2024 election in Michigan when you are looking at things like uh, party party registration, early vote, turnout mechanisms. I mean, just give us a sense of how the teams stack up right now, GOP versus Democrat in Michigan at this point in time. Well, obviously, I mean, if you're listening, if you're paying attention at all to what's happening in Michigan, we have had some problems in our party here in the state of Michigan. Just yesterday, a judge actually ruled on that because we had a party chair who was overthrown by delegates, some delegates um, in January, and then the other delegates that were supporting that party chair said, no, she wasn't overthrown. This was an illegal meeting. Then the new the, the other side actually voted in a new chair. And so for for a while, we actually had two chairs. And it was very confusing because there is a caucus this weekend. So for people who also don't understand in Michigan, we normally have a primary, but this year we're having a primary and a caucus because the Democrats moved the primary up. The RNC agreed that we could have a primary, give out some delegates primary day. A caucus will have the rest of the delegates will be awarded to the presidential candidate. However, we were having one in in Detroit, and now the new chair is having one in Grand Rapids. So there was a concern, oh gosh, we're going to have half the delegates in Detroit, half of them in Grand Rapids. Yesterday, a judge ruled on that and said, no, the new chair stays. Old chair has to give up control, has to give all of the social media back. So that is obviously still a, a division in the state. Still, those those delegates that were supporting the old chair are unhappy. We need to bring our party back together. Democrats think they have an advantage there. They don't have that issue. They have an organized party. They have a good ground game. They have a lot of grassroots activists. They have good control on college campuses. They are definitely, at this point, organized well. Republicans will get there, though. Okay, so if you were predicting right now, um, do you think that if the election had been last yesterday, that Donald Trump would beat Joe Biden in Michigan. Yes, absolutely. And I, I think there are people out there right now who are saying, no, he this this Arab American vote in Michigan is not that important, but it absolutely is. In years past, they've been the ones that are like, this is what pushed us over and this is why we won. And there is truly a divide there. It's not to be taken lightly. It's not to be celebrated or or not taken seriously. It is a true divide in the Democrat Party. But like I said, that goes beyond 
just the Arab Americans in the state of Michigan. You now have this situation on university campuses. So Michigan State, University of Michigan, they don't know how to bring those voters back and they don't know how to control Rashida Tlaib because having Rashida Tlaib, who is a well-respected voice in the state of Michigan, in fact, there was a time when Gretchen Whitmer was out there campaigning with her and saying what an amazing person Rashida Tlaib is. Now she's got her speaking against her. This is a real problem for them because people will follow Rashida. I don't suspect that Rashida is going to suddenly be like, you know what, we're going to give this whole ceasefire thing up for the general. I think she's going to stick with it. I don't think Joe Biden can actually give in to the, the mob here and say he's going to throw away an ally in the Middle East, our only ally in the Middle East. He's not going to Hopefully, I wouldn't think that he would make the mistake of going against the policy with Israel right now. So it's a very sticky wicket for Democrats. And I think that is where Donald Trump has an advantage, but also with auto workers, because they've seen their jobs leaving. They hear Donald Trump coming in and saying, I'm going to bring your jobs back. They know what happened in 2016. If you talk to people, they'll tell you, we moved out of the state. When Donald Trump was elected, we moved back in our, and we thrived in the auto industry, but we're afraid because right now all of these policies that Joe Biden has and Gretchen Whitmer has are anti-automotive. They're, they're pro-EV. That's not the future for automotive. You see that Ford has already come out and said, eh, this is not really great for us. We've seen people across the state of Michigan, their cars are dying in the winter. This is not a good look. Even Sean Fain came out and said, he's the president of the UAW. We're going to take our members' money and endorse Joe Biden but we're gonna actually see our members go out and vote for someone else. Well, who else are they gonna vote for? They're gonna vote for Donald Trump. So absolutely, I believe if the general election was run yesterday in the state of Michigan, Donald Trump would have prevailed. There would have been no Nikki Haley in the race. Those votes would have gone to him and Joe Biden would have had a poor showing. Tudor, you mentioned Oakland County and I wanna just ask you, cause you know the state well, um, my wife, born and raised basically in Oakland County, we got married in Birmingham. Uh, it's north of Detroit, which is Wayne County. Is Oakland County, in your mind, the number one bellwether county if you had to pick one to look at and try to assess how Trump Biden is looking going forward? In other words, if you we know as you move further north in Michigan, it gets redder. But Oakland County, highly educated suburban county, a lot of white population, a lot of Jewish, uh, some diversity, also Arab voters. Is that the number one county you would look to to determine how this election is going to go? Well, you're going to watch two, actually. You're going to watch Oakland, which is a, a suburb of Detroit area, kind of. And you're going to watch Kent, which is Grand Rapids. So sa similar situation. You've got to watch both sides of the state. If you look at Oakland County, it's a very interesting situation that we're seeing in Oakland County right now. And that's going to be hard for Democrats because they came in and took over Oakland County with the marijuana vote. And then they came over and they took over Oakland County with the abortion vote. But those two things are now enshrined in law. So now they don't have those. They're trying to pull back abortion and say, oh, no, actually, it could still be an issue. They're not going to be able to win on that. It is fully protected in the state of Michigan. And we all know that Republicans are going to have to come out and say, hey, look, this is not going to be there's not going to be something federal happen because there's not going to be 60 senators that are going to say, hey, yeah, we're going to put a ban in place on abortion. Abortion is safe in the state of Michigan. Now Democrats have a problem with both Oakland and Kent because they could lose women. Women are the ones that are out there packing the lunches every day. Women are the ones driving kids to school and going off to work. They're getting gas. They're getting more gas than their husbands oftentimes because they're then also transporting them back and forth from sports. They're also buying the groceries and they're seeing a massive increase. I had a woman just before Christmas say to me, who was not a Republican, by the way, say to me, I can tell it's almost election time. And she was sheepish about it. I said, what do you mean? And she said, I can't afford the Christmas gifts I could afford last year. And I think it's time for a new president. That is a shocking admission from a woman in Michigan who is not a Republican. That's going to change the game on the ground here. Tudor, if you were to advise Donald Trump on how to win back or win as many female voters as possible in Michigan, which I'm sure would be applicable for some of the other battleground states too. Uh, what, what would you tell them? You have to tell these women that their communities are going to be safe. 
We have seen too much violence in Michigan communities, too many soft on crime uh, prosecutors. We have a situation in our capital city that is out of control, and that is that can be directly linked to the shooting that we saw on Michigan State's campus. Your kids, when they go to school, they're going to be safe. Your kids, when they go to college, they're going to be safe. Your kids, when they're walking through the neighborhood, they're going to be safe. And we're not going to let a bunch of illegal immigrants come in and bring fentanyl into this state anymore or come into this state and harm people. That's the message that mothers want to hear. They wanna hear that they matter, that their families are going to be safe. And there is no other, the Democrats have no opportunity whatsoever to tell women they're gonna keep people safe. I mean, it's a basic of government. That is a basic function. When we think about how government should work, we're like, you know what? Police should keep us safe. Prosecutors should keep us safe. That is not basic to the to the Democrats. Why are Republicans not out there telling people we just want to keep you safe? That's what we think government is. It's a fantastic question, Tudor. What do you have coming up for people who haven't sampled the podcast yet? What are they missing? What will they hear? Well, you should check out today. We have a great guy on. I've been talking a lot about the concerns I have about the amount of people that are on pharmaceutical medications in this country, the amount of young people. And this Dr. Peter Bregan came on. He actually was a, a instrumental in the Columbine case in the, the woman. I, I know you all remember the case of the young woman who texted her boyfriend until he committed suicide. Some great insight into that story and what is happening to our kids that are put on all of these antidepressants and anti-anxiety drugs. We just had a study come out that said that after 2020, we saw an immense increase in 12 to 18 year old young women who were put on antidepressants and anti-anxiety drugs. And you'll hear Dr. Bregan talking about, well, that seems to coincide with an increase in suicides. What does that mean? You'll have to listen to find out, but of some pretty interesting information about the pharmaceutical companies and what's going on there, you've got to tune in and listen. Tudor has four daughters. She's got her hands full. And I guarantee you, if you are a mom out there and you are listening to us, you will love her podcast. Tudor, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Tudor Dixon, part of the Clay Travis Buck Sexton Podcast Network. Go check her out. Go subscribe today. 